Hey, it's Ben, and in this video, we're going to be going over a workflow automation company called N8N. So N8N is a more technical, intense, yet simply flexible version of these other automation tools like Zapier and Make.com. It allows you to connect nodes to help you connect apps, automate tasks, and even build multi-step AI agents. And a big difference to these other no-code softwares is that it's not in a rigid flow, which starts at the top and then ends at the bottom with the steps underneath it. Instead, with N8N, they took a non-linear approach. Like you can have what they call nodes branch out from other nodes, and then those nodes branch out into its own task so it's not a step-by-step -step flow like zapier instead you have the flexibility to configure it and design it with as much complexity as you want which is super cool but you can understand how it can get a bit technical and for your information a node is a single building block that performs one action like sending a message making an api call or transforming data all inside a workflow i think the sentence sums it up perfectly from their website when it comes to the flexibility they mention code when you need it ui when you don't so other tools they limit you to either having it in a code version or a visual Visual building experience but n8n has combined that both so you have the flexibility to go deeper if you want and you understand the coding language but if you want a drag and drop workflow you also have that option that's why they advertise it on their website by saying built for technical teams where it does get trickier is when you start working with the apis or json data or conditional logic then you will feel that it is more developer focused and then just like these other no code platforms it has hundreds of integrations where you can make platforms that don't usually talk together talk together so this company is being used by massive companies and has become one of the most popular automation platforms on GitHub. So whether you're in IT or if you're just building AI powered tools, NA10 gives you more control than any other platform out there. Okay, then we get into NA10's actual pricing. So they offer two methods of use. The first option is on the cloud, this version you pay for, but the second option, which is really cool, is where you can self-host it and that is for free. So if you want the easiest way to get started, then the NA10 cloud version is the easiest version to use. There is no setup, no servers, you just log in and you start building. It's perfect if you want the power of NA10 without having to deal with the technical side. And that plan starts at around 20 bucks per month. But also what's super interesting is that you only pay based off of executions. An execution is a single run of an entire workflow. So instead of charging you for every single step inside your workflow, like Zapier does, with NA10, you can have unlimited steps and you only get charged through one execution of that entire workflow. Then with the self-hosting option, if you are more technical and you want full control, you can self-host NA10 on your own platforms like Railway, Render, or even on your own computer's Docker. That means that you're able to run it on your own server with no limits on the features just all the usage. It is more for developers or tech teams or anybody who likes tinkering on automation. And what's super cool about this plan is that there is no charge from the NA10 platform, not for executions, not for subscriptions. It does become your own private automation platform. So you may need to pay a couple bucks depending on whatever you're hosting it on, but the actual NA10 company itself doesn't charge, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to jump in on the cloud version of the platform here. So currently I'm on the free trial, but once you sign up, it will ask you a couple questions to get to know why you're using that platform. And once you do that, you will come into a page that looks like this. Then you have the option of creating a workflow. So I'm going to click on create. And you'll see that this dashboard is already way more flexible just on the UI side than Zapier is or the other platforms. So if I click on add first step, you can see that I can pick from the triggers and on app event and on schedule, on webhook call, on form submission, when executed by another workflow, on chat message and other ways. So it's just different ways to start the execution of your workflow. So let's say I want to use Notion and I want to connect it to another page of Notion, maybe in a completely different workspace, or I just wanted to perform a task in the one and then it auto performs a task inside of notion on a different page so what i would do is just type in notion and then I'll click on on page, add it to database. So you'll see this page over here. And if you're not a techie, it can be quite overwhelming to look at this at first, but it is simpler than you think. You'll see that whatever node or action you want to create in your workflow, there is documentation linked to that specific step. So in this case, if I want information on the Notion trigger, I'll just click on docs and it'll take me to all the information that I'll need for Notion. And it does that with all the other triggers as well. Also, a good thing to know is that this platform is mainly API based, which means you're connecting APIs to APIs, which is a bit more complex than perhaps make.com where instead of connecting APIs you just have to sign into an account so with Notion I had to add my API key so what I did was come to my Notion integrations and then I had to create a new integration in doing so you're going to get the API key that you would then plug into NA10 to perform your actions so this process was pretty simple I just followed the documentation and I set this up in around two minutes so pretty much what I'm saying for my example workflow is that once I create something inside of the specific page in Notion I wanted to create another page in a different Notion folder I know it's a silly example but I just want to show you the flexibility 
flexibility or what you can actually accomplish inside this platform. So in this case, I selected my database and I called it new appointments. Then I created another node where I said I want the operation to be create a page. I want it to be titled appointments. And I want the type of name be a heading. Then you'll see when I click on test step, it will now pull the information and give me the output. So you'll see that this is a table view over here. But if you're more into the developer side, you can click over to JSON and you'll see what happened behind the scenes. So this is good to know because all these no code platforms do the exact same thing, except some of them don't show you this. Whereas N8N, they do if you want to use it, but they still give you the flexibility of using it in a simple way too. So what this did in my case is when I added this Ben at 5 p.m. into my Notion page, what it did was automatically create this appointments page because you can see that's what I told it to do. So I told it to create a page and call it appointments. Okay, this is only a two-step workflow, but you can make this as in-depth as you want. And then if I click on the plus button, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of different other nodes that I can connect. So if I go to advanced AI, you'll see I have a whole bunch of AI nodes. If I come down to actions in an app, you'll see that it connects with all these different platforms that again, don't really speak to each other. So if I want to do something like schedule an appointment on my Notion calendar, and then I want that to update onto my Google calendar, which then sends an email to the person that it's pulling the information from. So I'd set up my Notion and I'd search in here the Google calendar, where I would say I want the event action to be create an event. And then you'll see this information here where it has some text and some brackets here, and it looks super confusing, but pretty much it's just this information here. So these input elements are pretty much this, but in a non-text form, if that makes sense. So if I had to copy and paste that over, you would see now it doesn't say name, but it will break it up into the code version of that element. So if I didn't know how to do this, I would just go to docs and I'd follow the instructions on how to connect it. So you'll see that it does have a massive archive of information that will help you with the setup. But again, if you are new to this, then it can be quite intimidating. Okay, so now we come down to some really cool use cases. So I saw a person use it to create an AI agent where they connected their emails, their calendar, their Slack, and a whole bunch of other things. Then what they would do is send a voice note or text to speech to the AI bot. So that came up in a little frame and he would voice note to this bot, pretty much telling it what to do. In this case, he said that he wants to book an appointment with John and to please put it on his calendar and then also send an email to John to let him know that the appointment has been booked. Then the workflow executed and it did just that. It added a booking to his calendar. It sent an email to John and they sent another voice note to this AI agent and said, actually, can you please push it back from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m.? And then once to push back the booking by an hour, it sent an email to the guy and then told him about the rescheduled time, which is pretty scary, but cool because he didn't actually tell the AI agent to send an email, but it did it automatically. When I saw that example, I thought of the Apple intelligence ad. Siri, what's the name of the guy I had a meeting with a couple of months ago at Cafe Grinnell? You met Zach Wingate at Cafe Grinnell. So that's like the same concept of what this person did in a pretty cool use case. So it would scan all the information that has been connected to it, make adjustments where it was told, and then even update people in the process as well. So you can just think of the flexibility options here. It's actually quite mind blowing. Now I understand that not everyone knows API knowledge or developer knowledge. So some of the easier ones to learn, if you do want a no code platform that can perform automations, firstly is make.com. Or again, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to do the API side of connecting APIs to make the platform speak to each other. You just sign into the platforms with your information and then automatically pulls the API information. But with Make, you only get two automations for free before they start charging you. Then another one is Zapier. You get up to five automations, which is free, which is super cool, but they end up charging you more than Make once you get into the tens and twenties number of automations and workflows. And then finally, another really good automation option is High Level. If you want a platform that covers everything you need to run a business, including the automation side, that is user and beginner friendly. So in High Level, instead of paying for the amount of workflows you use, that feature is actually unlimited. So you can build as many workflows as you want for free, and then you just pay for the overall subscription of the entire platform. And again, that platform can run your entire business. Great. So that was the rundown of NA10. Very powerful, very flexible platform with the ability to run the entire program on your own local servers. If you want to see a walkthrough of the Zapier platform, make sure you check out this video over here. And if you have any comments, let us know down below. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.